Hi, let's look more into loops for 3 and plus 1. Given any operation sequence, we can solve for the m that if you put it into the operation sequence, you get the same m out. That makes a loop. Now, every m you try turns out to be a fraction, not an integer. So nobody's found any integer loops out there for 3 and plus 1. And in fact, we're trying to prove that there are none. And here we're using k equals 13, x equals a, just as a stand-in so we can look at some concrete cases. Now we proved that the circuit loop can't consist of integers, and not just for this case, but for all k and x. And we proved the same for some repetitious types of loops like up, up, down, up, up, down, and so on. How about other types of loops? Uh, with k equals 13, x equals 8, there are 99 distinct loops, and here are some of them. And they're associated beta values. If beta over 1361 is an integer, then we've got the possibility of an integer loop. Now one trick was to add 1361 to the numerator, so this still has to be an integer, and then cross off a lot of factors of 2, making this less than 1, so it's not an integer. Uh, so here's some of the beta plus 1361 values. For the circuit loop, we can cross off 2 to the 8th, which is plenty. And for the rest of these loops, look, we can cross off 2 to the y, where y is the number of initial up moves. That's pretty cool. And maybe crossing off 2 to the y is enough to get this ratio under 1. And then we could say, if you start with at least y up moves, you can't be an integer loop. Now, why do loops that start with y up moves have y factors of 2 here? Well, uh, you just need a little algebra. Uh, beta is the sum of these two things. Uh, and if we add 2 to the k minus 3 to the x to beta, it cancels the 3 to the x's leaving every term divisible by 2 to the y. Now, what kind of y is big enough to send this ratio under 1? Uh, two things. Beta has to be smaller than 3 to the x, x over 2, by our high loop bound a couple episodes back. And 2 to the k minus 3 to the x has to be bigger than about 3 to the x over x to the 13.3 by the Wren's theorem about the separation of the powers of 2 and 3. So if our loop has a y greater than 16 log x, then we'll be below 1. And this over here can't be an integer loop. So wow, that says if we've got some huge loop with zillions of members, where x is a zillion, and it starts with more than 16 log x up moves, then it can't be an integer loop. And even better, we can rotate this loop without changing its membership. So any loop with 16 log x consecutive up moves anywhere can't be an integer loop. And here are some examples. So if a loop has a thousand members, we can rule it out if it has more than 159 consecutive up moves. If it has a million members, we just need 318 consecutive up moves. And if it has a billion members, we just need 478. So is that most of the billion member loops out there? Almost all of them? Almost none of them? Let's imagine all the necklaces we can make with a billion yellow beads and 400 million blue beads. That's a lot of necklaces. And let's ask, what percent of those necklaces have 478 consecutive yellow beads? Seems like it would happen now and then, but the math says extremely rare. At best, we're ruling out one out of every 10 to the 30th loops. This makes sense. So if, imagine y were just log x, then the chance of the first y operations all being up moves would be, you know, a half to the log x, which is 1 over x. And as x increases, the chance of such a loop approaches zero. So we've actually ruled out almost no loops. But amazingly, this doesn't take away from our joyful feeling. And by the way, the old no-circuit proof is just a simple uh, corollary of what we did here. A circuit has x consecutive up moves, and x is definitely greater than 16 log x, for all x greater than 108. Okay, like in this progress, and see you next time.